Lexa has been very, very popular because it has best overall image quality and ultimately best production cost. And we're very, very proud that movies shot with the Alexa have won best visual effects and best cinematography three years in a row. So that, that's very, very nice. Um, we also track the global box office. You know, unfortunately, we tend to be here not to make art, but to make money. So this is the film industry. And so to track how our products are doing, we look at the global box office. And in 2014, of the 10 movies that have made the most amount of money, six were shot with Alexa. Of the remaining four, two were animation and two were 35 millimeter film. This, this statistics, month after month, makes us very, very happy. In there, you'll notice two of those already shot with Alexa XT cameras, which brings me to my next topic, which is the Alexa XT. Alexa XT has also been very successful. Part of it is that there's an Airy Raw recorder built into the camera. You don't need an external Airy Raw recorder anymore. And we have seen a significant increase in the use of Airy Raw since the XT has been introduced. The XT also has a 4x3 sensor option. The Alexa is the only camera that has a tall sensor. Everybody has a 16x9 sensor, but we are the only ones who have a sensor that is taller, which is perfect for anamorphic lenses. Then we have another format called Open Gate. A little bit more about that in a second. And of course, there are internal full spectrum neutral density filters that you have to change them manually, but they don't change their color tint as you have higher densities, which is lovely, which has always been a problem with the external neutral density filters. Uh, that brings me to software update packet 10. Now, in the Alexa, there are chips called FPGAs. The cool thing about an FPGA is we can totally reprogram it. They are slightly heavier, take a lot more power than the ASICs a lot of other people use in their cameras, but ASICs cannot be reprogrammed. They make the camera and that's what the camera does. Alexa, we can totally reprogram it. We have been doing this. Now we have the 10th software update that should be available if I get around at some point to proofread the manual and write the release notes middle of next week. Software 10, probably middle of next week. What's in there? New Apple ProRes codec. A little bit more about that also in a second. Support for SPS Pro Plus cards. It'll support the 128 cards, correct? And the 64. Yeah. It'll support both SPS Pro Plus cards. And That's really key. Uh, I don't know if this has happened worldwide, but you can't buy the 64 gig card. It has happened worldwide, yeah. Sony ran out. We bought the last hundreds of SPS Pro cards, and now we're also run. I think we're lo we don't have any anymore. So yeah, I agree. That is key. <laughs> Patiently slash impatiently waiting. Understood. However, we are supporting these cards. So for the existing classic Alexas, that's an option. However, you can always upgrade to an XR, which means you take the XT side cover and slap it on the existing camera, and then you can use XR capture drives or CFast 2.0 cards, which are this, it's the same medium that's used in the Amira, and I believe there's an Amira standing right there. So, you know, your choice if you want to stay with SBS Pro Plus or if you want to migrate to CFast 2.0. We have 180 degree image rotation, which is great for Steadicam guys who may want to get a quick low mode shot without having to reconfigure their rig. It's also great for our ultra wide zoom, which is a completely unique optical design that has the image upside down in relation to what most normal lenses have. So, for that, the 180 degree image rotation is useful. Open gate for Alexa M. A um, bunch of other features. What I'd really like to talk about, though, is the ProRes 4x4 XQ. We have been approached by a number of people who said, look, you know, I'd like to shoot something with a little more quality than 4x4. Now, don't misunderstand me. ProRes 4x4 is a fantastic codec. I would say 85% of anything shot with the Alexa is shot in 4x4. In some instances, though, people have wanted a higher data rate. And this is the reason. This is a graphic that shows you Uncompressed video here, green, the green um, tower here is the data rate, and then the blue line is the noise. So uncompressed video, very, very low noise, high data rate. ProRes 404XQ for a significant reduction in noise, you actually get not that much, um, sorry, redu significant reduction in data rate, just a little bit more noise. And then as we continue, as the data rate goes down, the image gets compressed and the resulting low-level compression artifacts show up as noise. And that's one of the ways you can uh, judge how good a codec is by measuring the noise that results from the codec. 
My colleague Henning will, have, will show you another method to judge the quality of codecs in a while. So ProRes 4x4 XQ is positioned right between uncompressed and ProRes 4x4. Now, we've had some people who said, well, great, I'm going to shoot my whole feature or TV series on 4x4 XQ. But more than that, a lot of people have said, great, I'll continue shooting talking heads on 4x4. And for the special effects scenes and the wide vistas, I'm going to use 4x4 XQ. That's for all those, of course, who can't afford the 65 camera. Anyway, um, ProRes 3.2K. So this is a feature for Software Update 11. In Software Update 11, we will introduce a new way to record ProRes where we take 3,168 by 1,782 photo sites from the sensor and record them straight into a file of exactly the same size, a ProRes file. Now, what is that good to? That's great if you want to upsample to UHD. You need to shoot something on the Alexa, you want to use Alexa, you want to use ProRes, and you need to deliver UHD. This is the perfect format for that. This should be available at the beginning of next year. Um, we've done the first tests. It'll work on the Alexa XT and XR camera, so this will not work on the classic cameras. And actually, since we announced this about three weeks ago, we've gotten a great increase in orders for the XR upgrade module. It's yet another reason to upgrade to the XR upgrade module. Um, at 24 frames a second, we're going to have about 700 megabits a second. We're, you know, we're still working on this. This is a, a work in development work in progress, so we're not sure what the exact data rate is, but we're going to be right about there. We support all ProRes uh, flavors. It'll be probably up to 40 frames a second, somewhere around there. And the image circle is 29.74 millimeters. And I'll tell you why that is important, because here is the Alexa sensor. That's the whole sensor. Now, for a lot of people who shoot for 4K feature films, they say, great, I'll use the Airy Raw open gate format. That's fantastic. But every raw is a relatively high data rate. And if you shoot for television, you want to shoot for television for UHD, you probably can't afford every raw. Even though there are two television shows in the world that actually are shooting every raw open gate. I was surprised to learn that recently. So ProRes 3.2K is slightly less sensor area, but it is ProRes. We can easily compress it in the camera. And the image is not as large as the open gate. So most lenses still cover it. The ProRes, um, I mean, so the Airy Raw Open Gate has a 33.5 millimeter image circle, where some lenses do a vignette on the edges. So with ProRes 3.2K, you don't have that issue. You can shoot, use any of these lenses, up res to UHD. You have your UHD deliverable. Which brings me to the next item, which Mark, is can I ask you yeah, sure. Coming back to that slide. Sure, sure. No sweat. Is that a larger image area than is currently? 16 by 9 ProRes 444. 16, yeah, 16 by 9 ProRes 444 is about this big. Okay. And I'll have I'll some pictures to show you that too. What this actually is, this is the ProRes, this is the normal 16 by 9 plus surround view. With a little, yeah. So you're now capturing the surround view, yeah. which also means you don't get any more surround view in the viewfinder. Everything you see in the viewfinder is what you're actually capturing. Mm -hmm. And that allowed us to do this because we already have the signal paths in the camera for normal 16 by 9 plus surround view. OK. Now, um, if we could play the Nordic Rhapsody, Peter? Can we play Nordic Rhapsody now? So shot in 3.2K, up res to UHD, displayed on a UHD display here.
So that was UHD, and in our opinion, we've also shot some comparison tests. This doesn't look better than all the native 4K cameras, but it doesn't look worse either. It looks totally great in UHD, so this is an option to shoot for television series with the Alexa and deliver <coughs> UHD. All right, so this brings me to the last part of my presentation, well, of my, the first part of my presentation, which is capture with Alexa, deliver anything. What I, did, I came up with this on my flight back from NAB because I've been talking to a lot of people, and what I realized is that right now our customers, you guys, you want three things. A, you want to be able to deliver HD, 2K, UHD, and 4K. Two, you want to shoot with spherical and anamorphic lenses. And three, there's been a lot of talk about high dynamic range displays. Um, Dolby Vision, we've worked very, very close with Dolby, and they've come up with a system called Dolby Vision that has a monitor that is much brighter and has a much higher contrast ratio than most monitors, and the images look fantastic on them. And what we found is that the difference between a regular dynamic range monitor and a high dynamic range monitor is so much bigger than the difference between 2K and 4K in terms of the visual impact. Everybody sees it. I could bring my grandmother and put her in front. In the last row of the movie theater, she'd still see the difference between low dynamic range and high dynamic range. 2K to 4K, I don't think my grandmother could still see that. So what we have with the Alexa is we have solutions for all these requirements. Talking about the different resolutions, we have multiple recording formats. If you're shooting for high definition television, you can shoot ProRes HD or DNX HD. If you shoot for a 2K feature, you can use ProRes 2K or every raw, and people are using it. If you shoot for UHD, you can use ProRes 3.2K, or rather will be able at the beginning of next year. And if you shoot for a 4K feature, you can shoot in every raw, either 16 by nine, four by three, or what is now very popular, open gate. Spherical anamorphic, as I've mentioned earlier, we're the only manufacturer that has different sensor modes. We can shoot in 16 by nine, we can shoot four by three, we can shoot open gate. And four by three is what you want for anamorphic lenses. So if you have an anamorphic show, this is fantastic. This is the lens, this is the sensor mode you want to use, and this is the camera you want to use. And if you're a rental, this gives you great flexibility. The same camera can go out on a large anamorphic feature film, but it could also go on a 16 by nine television show or a commercial. And then last but not least, high dynamic range. Up to this point, the Alexa still is the camera with the highest dynamic range of all the cameras out there. Um, I think we really got very, very lucky in terms of the photo side design of the Alexa. It has a wide latitude, very nice extended clean highlights, low noise, and great color reproduction, even when over or underexposed. And that's really, really, really important second little sentence, because let's be honest, not everybody always exposes 100% perfect. And the, my, my favorite test, and I love this, I, I shoot this test as often as I can, is you take a bunch of cameras, you put a person in a room, you have, we, you, we, we have a, a patterned black shirt and a patterned white shirt at Ari, so you hang these shirts right next to them, light it nicely, you shoot it. Properly exposed, one, two, three, four, five stops underexposed. Properly exposed, one, two, three, four, five stops overexposed. Then you take it into post, and oh, you also have a gray card, very important, gray card in there. You take it into post, and based on the gray card, you bring everything back up to normal exposure. That's the perfect test, because that's when you see when the image breaks. You'll see what nasty stuff people have hidden in the dark parts of the images. You see when the, when the light parts are overexposed and what weird color shifts you may or may not get in the light parts. So, and that's important because people do over and underexpose. And the more meat you have in there, the thicker your net digital negative is, so to speak, the easier it is in post to make a good image without very little fuss. And that's the end of my first part. And I'll hand over to my colleague Henning Redlein, who's going to tell you a little bit about workflow. Henning.